My name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and this is a patient education video on knee arthritis and surgical options, including knee replacement. I am a board-certified orthopedic surgeon practicing in San Francisco, California. My specialty is knee and shoulder arthroscopy and reconstructive surgery. I specialize in joint replacement, ranging from partial knee replacement to revision knee arthroplasty. This talk will start with a brief introduction, outline the, the anatomy of the knee. It will finish with real patient cases. The knee is the largest joint in the body. It is comprised of the femur, tibia, and the patella. The end of the bone is covered with articular cartilage, which is the protective covering of the knee. The meniscus is a shock absorber between the femur and the tibia. As you can see, the knee is a complex joint comprised of bony anatomy and soft tissue anatomy. The soft tissue anatomy includes tendons, ligaments, and the meniscus. A knee x-ray is used to visualize the bones of the knee. This is the most accurate method of characterizing arthritis. As you can see, there are multiple anatomic structures that are seen on both the AP as well as the lateral view. These images will be reviewed with you in my office. The knee anatomy is very complex. Each line and bone on an x-ray corresponds with the anatomy of the bone. Any abnormalities can be seen on x-ray. These will be visualized and discussed during your patient visit. There are several causes of chronic knee pain. The most common cause is osteoarthritis. This is the standard wear and tear of the articular cartilage. This commonly occurs with age and commonly affects multiple joints. Another cause of arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis. This is a genetic disease which results in destruction of the joint. However, current medications have been very successful in, in improving outcomes with patients with rheumatoid arthritis and helping avoid the need for surgery. Another common cause of arthritis is post-traumatic arthritis. This is arthritis that occurs following an accident. This is common following workplace injuries, automobile accidents, and sporting accidents. These x-rays show a normal knee as well as an arthritic knee. You can see the femoral articular cartilage and the tibial articular cartilage. And on the arthritic x-rays, you can visualize the osteophytes or bone spurs. You can also see the joint space narrowing resulting in bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. As with most conditions, I always prefer to start with conservative treatment. Conservative treatment of arthritis consists of medication management, including anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen and Tylenol. Physical therapy is also used to help strengthen and balance the knee. When medication management and physical therapy fail, we often turn to injections. Steroid injections are safe and effective course of treatment. In addition, these are inexpensive and covered by insurance. Hyaluronic acid injections provide cushion and support to the knee. These are safe and moderately expensive. They are often approved by insurance companies. Platelet-rich plasma or PRP injections are also safe and effective. The downside of these injections are that they are not covered by insurance and cost approximately $700 per injection. When conservative treatment fails, we turn to knee replacement options. There are four standard options for knee replacement surgery. The first is a partial knee replacement or unicompartmental arthroplasty. The second is a total knee arthroplasty. The third is a total knee arthroplasty using computer navigation. And the fourth is a revision total knee arthroplasty for patients with a prior failed knee replacement. A partial knee replacement or unicompartmental arthroplasty is used when arthritis is isolated to one aspect of the joint. This is a less common procedure and occurs in approximately 5% of cases of arthritis. This is a very safe and effective surgery and can be done as an outpatient surgery. A total knee replacement is the most common option for knee replacement. This is generally indicated for grade 4 arthritis, which constitutes bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. This replaces the cartilage on both the femur, the tibia, as well as the patella. This typically requires a night in the hospital. Total knee replacement using computer navigation is particularly helpful for patients with prior surgery or altered anatomy. This uses computer-guided measurements for intraoperative precision. This allows for more accurate restoration of the mechanical access of the lower extremity. However, there is no long-term data showing that it has resulted in better outcomes than a standard total knee replacement. However, I do use it in patients with complicated knee replacements and prior surgery. 
Revision knee replacement is indicated for patients who have had a prior knee replacement which has either failed or is painful. This requires replacement of the old components and is technically a more difficult procedure due to the prior surgery. However, with careful patient selection and good surgical technique, good outcomes can be achieved. Knee replacement uh, surgery typically follows a standard protocol. This is generally a two-hour procedure. The surgery is done with either general or spinal anesthesia. A nerve block is used for pain control. No blood transfusion is necessary. Uh, for young, healthy patients, this surgery can be done on an outpatient basis. However, this typically is done in the hospital and requires a one to two day hospital stay. With careful surgical technique, knee replacement surgery can result in a 95% success rate. Outcomes are good with respect to good pain relief, improved range of motion, and increased mobility and function. However, with any surgery, there are risks. In knee replacement surgery, the overall risk is less than 5%. The risks that we are concerned about include stiffness, incomplete pain relief, deep venous thrombosis, infection, injury to nerves or blood vessels, and hardware loosening or instability. Although these constitute real risks, with careful patient selection and careful surgical technique, the relative risk of surgery is low. Recovery following a knee replacement follows a standard course. Patients typically spend one to two nights in the hospital. We ask that you keep the dressing clean, dry, and intact for two weeks. We provide you with a waterproof dressing so that you can start showering on post-operative day number three. Sutures or staples are removed at two weeks. You may begin walking using a walker on post-operative day one. Patients typically use a walker for two to six weeks post-operatively. With respect to physical therapy, physical therapy starts the same day of surgery. We expect that patients will be out of bed walking with a walker on the same day of surgery. Our rehab goals are good range of motion and good flexion extension. We hope for 100 degrees of range of motion by four weeks and 120 degrees of range of motion by eight weeks. Our goal is to have little to no pain with activities of daily living by 12 weeks. However, it should be noted that full recovery can take three to six months. Now we move on to real patient cases. This is a patient who had isolated medial compartment arthritis. As you see on the initial x-ray, there is still adequate space in the medial compartment. However, in x-rays just one month prior to surgery, you can see that that space has started to collapse as the patient has had progressive loss of cartilage in the meniscus. Post-operative x-ray shows a unicompartmental arthroplasty in good position. The replacement was isolated to the medial aspect of the knee, and the rest of the knee, which did not have arthritis, is left intact. Again, you can see the replacement, which is isolated to the inside of the knee, and the patella and the outside of the knee have been less in, left intact. This is a case of a patient requiring total knee replacement. In this patient, there's joint space narrowing of the medial compartment as well as the uh, lateral compartment. Postoperatively, you can see the knee replacement components in anatomic position. The femur has been resurfaced, as has the tibia. This is a case of a complicated knee replacement which required the use of computer navigation. This patient had had a prior femoral fracture resulting in an intramedullary nail. In this patient, standard total knee replacement technique could not be used. As a result, we used computer navigated total knee replacement to put a knee replacement in the anatomic position. This patient has done well postoperatively and is now pain free. This is a case of a revision knee replacement. The patient underwent a primary total knee replacement but had persistent pain and instability. As a result, these components were removed and the patient was given a revision total knee replacement. This necessitated the use of stemmed components, which are much longer. However, the patient regained great functional uh, recovery with minimal pain. In summary, knee replacement is a safe and effective procedure. It is indicated when conservative therapies have failed. There are four main types of knee replacement, unicompartmental knee replacement, total knee replacement, total knee replacement with computer navigation, and revision total knee replacement. I'm a board certified orthopedic surgeon with advanced training in these techniques. It should be noted, however, that optimal patient recovery does require active patient engagement. Further information can be obtained on the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery website.